There he is in all his glory, digging, digging, digging. I haven't personally got to work with that guy over there in months. I haven't even got to talk to him yet. I'm gonna catch up with him, but before I do that, let me show you what's going on here. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So dark, let's see. Let's get out of the ship. Whoa, there's the sunlight. <laughs> hey pond people, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. We are back out here, mid-April, out in Bartlett. And last time we were out here, it was December and winter came and just shut us down. And we knew that would happen and we hate doing that, but at least he gave us a big jump on this project and we are ready to get back at it. I am here with Jack in the distance. New Jack out in front, you'll see him soon. So we got Jack and Jack and Brian it's probably a joke to be made about that, but I'll let you guys put it in there. We're back out here and we are gonna try to finish this project. I'm out here for about a week. We're gonna pull off again. I have to go to Michigan, do a job out in Kalamazoo, and then we'll be back out here first or second week of May, and we'll try to get this thing finished. I'll give you a little recap on what was done. Obviously, it's a cool, cool pond. It's super deep. It's a little over four feet deep. We have a massive wall in here. I think you can see some jets down on the bottom there. A lot of granite stonework in here. We have a wetland filter filter that we have to build over there, some spheres that need to happen over there. What we're gonna try to focus on this week is getting this section of the yard all finished. We have to build a waterfall coming out of this biofalls, coming right up to the patio here, then get that stream to kind of come in this way in here and then connect into the pond over in here. The reason we have to do this first is because once this is done, then we can start backing out of the yard and working that way and excavate out our wetland and excavate our area for the spheres, so on and so on. So we'll really just try to finish all of this area in here and then work our way out. So we're gonna get an excavator in here. We're gonna start digging all this stuff down and get this shaped out today. It's kind of muddy because it's April, but it is what it is. So let's get going. That's a wrap for today. Not a whole lot got done, but we did get this carved out. We got this carved out. We got areas over there by Jack. Figured out we got some edge work done in over there. Uh, we moved a bunch of soil over here, but you know, we've only, it's just the three of us for a couple hours. Tomorrow, we're gonna see major progress. Tomorrow we get into building this. I really wanna go off, talk a lot about why we have such a shallow area in front of the biofalls and the intention of doing that and why it's so important to do it if you can and then the size of the berm and everything else. And then we should get into here, build most of this waterfall. We cut out some of the patio, so then later we can cut the brick to fit around some of the boulders. And then we've got a bridge going in, and we've got to excavate out this stream area going into the pond. We also have to move an enormous amount of dirt. So tomorrow is go time, huh, Jack? I'm looking forward yeah. to tell, progress. Tell them to stay tuned. Stay tuned. Okay. There he is in all his glory, digging, digging, digging. I haven't personally got to work with that guy over there in months. I've been traveling my butt off in California. It was in Dallas, it was Tennessee, all these different places. Chris has been holding down the fort, cleaning ponds, fixing stuff. He just got back from working with Stanley with Dirt Monkey and uh, had an awesome experience. I haven't even got to talk to him yet to see how all that went. I'm gonna catch up with him, but before I do that, let me show you what's going on here. So the last time I left you guys, we were excavating out this whole area. We got all of that done. We're gonna get a bridge right there. Before we do that, we have set this area right here, five inches lower than water. So when we get a waterfall that comes through there, it'll come through more of a, what we call a deep shallow stream. So water from the pond actually backs up into this section. Elevations often cause us to do that because building up to create a waterfall right here would mean I have to build up there and there, which means I have to build up there and everything else. And we just didn't want to do that. The advantage to having a slightly deep stream is when we get a waterfall back there, then the water pushes. And so as that water 
water pushes out of this area, it helps a lot more with circulation. A lot of times if we get a waterfall, it actually creates kind of a undertow and can pull debris towards it before it wants to push out. This way, all of that debris pushes this way. So we get water pushing heavy from that area, heavy from this area, heavy from our jets, and everything will suck back into here. So Chris and I today have to seam this liner to our streamliner before we can start setting boulders and stuff in here. We've got a new shipment of boulders sitting over there. And today's goal will be really just to kind of finish off this space and hopefully weather allows us, and it's pretty nice out, weather allows us to get back over in there. Good, does that work for you guys? Good. <laughs> well, that's, that's the goal. We'll set up some GoPros, get uh, some time-lapse stuff going on so you can see what we're doing. And then I can't forget to tell you why we set the biofalls the way we did back over there. Sorry about the glare, but the sun is the sun. There's not much I could do. There's my face. <laughs> see you soon. All right, so you can see we've got our liner in all the way up to the top there. Our seam is done. You can see it right here, goes down and up. And one thing you're gonna notice is the excessive amount of folds in here. And so what happens when we take this big chunk of liner that comes from here all the way through to here, and then the same on this side, and then we try to do a big cove like this, of course the liner doesn't fit in there just right. It's almost like picture taking like a napkin and trying to put it into a glass and how many folds you'd get as that thing goes down in there. Because we have all of these folds in here, what I get worried about is as that water comes through here, a couple things can happen. You got a fold that's going uphill like this. We want to try to move all the folds down, not uphill, but upstream. We want to try to move all the folds downstream if at all possible. That'll make sure as the water comes through here, it doesn't pop a fold back up over time. So they go like this. The other thing we'll do is you can see Chris has grabbed a big piece of fabric. We're just gonna cover this whole section with a piece of fabric, eliminating even seeing these folds. More important than seeing the folds, what I get worried about is, especially in a pond where it's gonna be recreated in, somebody coming here and stepping in here. And if they step in here and a piece of gravel gets underneath this fold and then you get a piece of gravel on top, this pinch point is where you could possibly put a hole. So by taking a big piece of fabric, laying it in here and eliminating gravel from ever getting into those folds will just make it that much safer. So we'll get all that set and then that guy and I are gonna come in here start setting some boulders and then we'll get into this bridge then a waterfall and I'm hoping by the end of the day we get some things kind of placed in there. I don't know if we'll get the whole waterfall in but with that weather like this woo, stare at the sun right at it just look right at it. <laughs> we should be pretty good. So we're moving right along. We've gotten the bridge set. It is set basically at the same level as this bridge right here. Maybe about a half an inch higher, which is fine because then we'll slope the pathway just over to this one and a half inch, who cares? We've set some of the, excuse me. Let's just see if he can get this on his third try. Oh, that a boy. I'll tell you what, that claw makes all the difference. If you're gonna get a machine, don't waste your time without getting a claw. Notice how we've got some of the bigger rocks then set over here to frame things out and then we're kind of leaving some areas where we can do like these little granite boulder washes that kind of come up in through here they look very similar to like uh, I don't know like some of these cobbly areas back in through here what we don't want to do is see big rock big rock big rock we have to break up the monotony whether it's big rocks or little rocks now we're coming in and we could come in here and frame out this side but once we set that rock then our waterfalls is gonna get harder and harder to build so we're gonna start setting our boulders for the waterfall that's coming in here which is only gonna be about an eight to 10 inch high waterfall that'll drop down into the stream. Ultimately, it's gonna have a very narrow look through here. We've over excavated because we'd rather have more room to be creative than vice versa having to come back later and fold the liner back and then dig out to create something. So we always give ourselves a lot of extra. And then if we need to, we can always just backfill up to that rock. So we're gonna set some of these big boys in here, kind of frame out that waterfall, get this all set, and then figure out how we tie into here. And I'm thinking because we have big rock here, big rock here and another big one over there this will probably be more cobbly type stuff with more plants and stuff in it so we don't have mirror images all over the place you guys know what to do hang on tight we're gonna build a water 
So a much different day today, pretty rainy. They say we've got about 45 minutes before it comes, so Chris and I are trying to get as much in here as we possibly can. One thing we're working on now is the waterfall. So Chris, what are you doing here? So right now, you are standing on the main patio coming out the back door, and we wanna bring water right up to the patio and have this be an upper pool up here, but we're also setting a waterfall down below it. So we're trying to figure out what the elevation of this water is in combination with our waterfall, because this waterfall is going to establish water level back in here. If we set this fill stone that's on the underside of this liner and fabric too high, then it backs water level up too high in this pool, flooding out the patio. So we want to make sure that this spill stone underneath the liner and stuff here is low enough to compensate not only for the thickness of the water of going over the waterfall, but we also want to give ourselves three to four inches so that we can do all these edges correctly and it doesn't leak. So that's why we have the level set up here, setting on top of the spill stone. We brought it over. We want to find out where our level's at. And right now we are about from the bottom of the level, which is sitting on top of the spill stone. We've got, I don't know, Brian, maybe six, seven inches from the bottom of the level up to top of the patio. So I think we're in good shape. So now I'll clean up this edge, get all the little crumbs out of there, fold everything back, and then we can keep rolling. Awesome. Also notice how we cut. So your there's a couple things. Your waterfall stone is also known as a weir stone. It establishes water level behind it. And then we have another weir back here, just kind of a ledge in here. Notice how we shaved that down quite a bit lower than the height of that waterfall stone that's underneath the liner. <laughs> it doesn't really look like a waterfall stone, does it? But once we fold this back, I think you'll understand. But we shave this down lower than the top of that, so we have room to add a little bit of gravel in here, lower than the height of that. If that soil came all the way up to that level there, once we put gravel on top of it to hide it, all that gravel would wash over by the force of the water being fed out of the waterfall and pushing through here. So we always set that two to three inches lower. And then like Chris said, coming in here, establishing water based off of the path. So this is our patio right in here and we've got it at least six inches higher than that And we'll pull that back and I'll show you why we've set our edges so much higher than our waterfall stone So there's the liner all pulled back You can see Chris adding some gravel there just to hold it in place bags of gravel But look at how much we've choked this waterfall down. That's choked down to about three inches wide We love doing waterfalls like this. It's super simple It's what we see in nature a whole lot more than just big sheets of water. It gives a considerable different sound a really dip deep gurgling sound but what happens is when we take a big rock like this and a big rock like this and choke it down that much and you push 5,000 gallons of water an hour through a three inch opening of course that water is gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker you sometimes we even eliminate this stone and just bring a stone like this all the way over and match these two we call them V waterfalls where you're basically building a waterfall out of two rocks but like I said you're gonna back up the water quite a bit so that's why we've got our edges set a good six seven inches higher than this stone here and then if you can see where Chris is at that liner is lower because the only way to hide that is to put stone and gravel over it and we don't want that higher than this point here you'll also notice this big void then behind everything so we're gonna have to come in here and we're gonna do a bib liner and foam everything back behind this which we'll show you a little bit later maybe even on a sunnier day <laughs> Chris what you got <laughs> Fire boulder! Dang! This thing is friggin' sweet, dude. Look how real it looks. Actually, the, the color of this really, really matches our granite color over in there. It's as close to that as I can possibly imagine. So what's happened is our customer, after sitting with a unfinished water feature for the entire winter, watching YouTube, watching some of our other stuff, said, hey, how hard would it be to add one of your fire stones into our patio? And what Hey Brian. I said, yeah, pretty easy. <laughs> so we're gonna take this, Chris and I are gonna take this thing, carve it in right off the edge of the patio. The hardest part's gonna be recutting some of the patio to fit around that to make it look like that thing was there forever. We also wanna set it up so it's not too high, but not too low. A little bit of this is gonna probably sit into the water, which will be very cool. All the connections will be above water and put our propane tank back over there. This oh. is cool. This is the like that custom, take your time and just really make it look incredible moment that uh, happens on so many of our projects. 
So we thought the two of us, it would just be fun to kind of try to get this thing finished before that rain comes in yep. and wish us luck. Here we go. So we dry set that fake fire rock over here on the corner of the patio, spinning it the way so that the most amount of people can enjoy it. So what Brian did is he took a pencil while it was sitting on the patio and just traced everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take my grinder, get my eye protection and go ahead and cut this out so that we don't actually have to pull up any of these pavers. There's what Brian, about six, eight inches of base material underneath there yeah you can see that the patio is installed right they got a lot of good base material underneath there and so what we'll do is this will be garbage this will be garbage we'll obviously have to pull these pieces out so we can get our liner back up and around them and then that fits right along in there so Chris is gonna go ahead and start cutting this and uh, we'll see if we can't get this thing set today in there we're gonna actually bring it up maybe another inch just so it sits a little bit better almost like a footrest so you can put your feet by it so I think it's got to come up I don't know inch and a half two inches oh, somewhere in there but how cool is this gonna look with the patio cut right around it water coming up to the face of it on this side and then some boulder work in there well you guys stay tuned Chris I think this is probably a good point to um, end this episode and bring him in uh, next time to see this finished waterfall over here well if that's the case you guys know what to do Make sure you always tune in on Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. And give us a thumbs up. Let us know you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, leave us a comment. You want a Kleenex? <laughs>